Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. My name is Akshita Puram and I am a product marketing manager at SmartBear. SmartBear, for those of you who are unfamiliar with us, we are a leading provider for software quality tools for teams over 22,000 organizations around the world. Today we are presenting artificial intelligence for faster and smarter software testing um, and along with Lino Tadros. Lino is a senior software solution architect at Solians and an industry-renowned speaker. He has been using Test Complete for two decades and has taught over 300 classes on Test Complete during that period. We are very fortunate to have him today as a part of, as a part of the broader SmartBear family. Before we go ahead and we get started, I would love to learn a little bit more about those on um, the line, a little bit about you. So how many people are on your team? So I'm gonna go ahead and set up a poll um, very quickly that will pop up on your screen. And this will help us tailor some of the questions and the discussions that we have during this webinar for all of you. So it looks like we have some good sized teams here. Um, mainly in the five to nine team members. All right, wonderful. So I'll go ahead and I'll end the polling and share the results so you can all see where the everyone is coming from around, around the globe. Um, all, in addition, it's always wonderful to see where everyone is coming from uh, and dialing in in the chat room. Can you also include where we where you are coming from around the world? And you can go ahead and use the chat room for that. All right, wonderful. And just so everyone is um, aware of our webinars at Smart Bear, we provide all of the webinars for upcoming resources as well as webinars that we convert to be on demand. You can find all of them at smartbear.com forward slash resources. There you'll find a list of webinars, ebooks, and also all of our white papers that we um, provide, provide to you. If you have any questions throughout the webinar, please go ahead and use the Q&A section of the Zoom. That way, if we do not get to your question um, during this webinar or at the end where we allocate time for questions and answers, we can go ahead and respond to you afterwards. Now, without further ado, I'd like to hand it off to my co-presenters to introduce themselves and also share with you what they are most excited about when it comes to talk about when it comes to AI. Prashant, would you like to kick us off? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Akshita. Hi, everybody. My name is Prashant. I work with the product team, uh, with Test Complete. And uh, thank you so much for taking the time out. Uh, we know that you're, you're, you're busy and there's a lot of webinars and work that you need to do. So we really appreciate you taking the time out. Um, as far as AI is concerned, I think I think um, uh, there's, there's a lot of things that I do. I don't even realize that it's being powered in the background by AI. But I think some things that come uh, to mind straight away is uh, is is one of them is is Netflix. I think there is a, a strong uh, uh, use of uh, of artificial intelligence there in that. In that most of the most of the things I see nowadays is per recommendation. It's like I don't plan to see anything these days. So that's one of the things that I uh, that I leverage on a day to day basis. And uh, and uh, and we just uh, introduced our, our our new version of the product a few uh, weeks ago uh, with some AI capability that we'll talk through uh, the rest of the webinar. So thank you so much and uh, welcome, Lino. Thank you, Prashant. I appreciate it. Hello, everybody. I'm uh, really excited to be in this webinar with everybody. And uh, I'm a, a chief architect, actually, at uh, Solines. So I've been in the business for about uh, 30 years. Uh, I've used the Test Complete for a couple of decades and SOAP UI Pro for the last maybe five, six years. And uh, I'm very excited to be here today to hopefully uh, 
help with some of the questions that will be coming up. And of course, the last couple of years have been very heavy for me on artificial intelligence and machine learning. I have been involved with a lot of different projects on the Azure cloud and also on the AWS for Amazon and on the Google cloud. I'm certified on the Google cloud, on the Azure cloud as well. And I'm looking forward to, uh, to maybe answer some questions. So thank you for having me. Thank you, Lino. It's always great to have you um, and great to have you on today's webinar. So before we go ahead and get started, you know, there's, a, there's some people who are new to AI and the software testing world, some people who have dabbled in it, uh, and some people on this line that may be very familiar with it. But you know, when it comes to this webinar, we, we do want to provide a baseline, and there are some key questions to consider as we move forward. One is, how does AI, how, are the, how is it transforming businesses today? How can AI impact software quality? And how can we take those learnings that people, where people are applying AI to their businesses, how can we apply that to um, an improve software quality? What areas is AI impacting software testing specifically, and which areas are they most prevalent? And what is SmartBear doing with AI to help testers? And now this is, you know, perfect segue into talking more about how AI is impacting software testing. Lino, in your experience, what is AI to you and what is the difference between AI, machine learning, and deep learning? Ah, that's, that's a big question. Everywhere I go, people think they're the same thing when people talk about machine learning or artificial intelligence. In reality, they are different. Uh, for instance, machine learning is the subfield of computer science that gives computers the ability to learn without being explicitly programmed. So that's a very big deal to understand that machine learning is, is, is the ability to learn without being explicitly programmed. Deep learning, for instance, takes a different approach than uh, machine learning. One that was originally inspired by the way the human brain processes information in, in layers of neurons. So you will see that a lot, for instance, in robotics and so on. Uh, they try to mimic that in a deep learning. Artificial intelligence, on the other hand, uh, refers to scenarios where a machine mimics the cognitive function associated with human minds, such as learning and problem solving. Because AI leverages machine learning or deep learning algorithms, it is viewed as an umbrella. So everything falls under artificial intelligence. But in reality, hopefully, it makes sense the difference between three of them because they are not the same thing. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we hope those different differences um, and that definition and how Lino has described it really helps you in explaining the and how to adopt kind of deep dive into how to adopt each of those aspects in your organization, which really is a good segue into going deeper into artificial intelligence specifically. And one of the things that we realize is that wherever you are in the world, you know, we are all trying to work faster and smarter. Whether it is with the AI or not, whether it's with machine learning in areas that we don't know, as Prashant has mentioned, and whether it's deep learning um, in areas that people are and businesses are really expanding their limits with. And because of all of these new advances, it's clear that the speed and persuasiveness of technology today has really forced us to get rid of traditional thinking so we can start focusing on creating the futures. And so in the next couple of slides, I actually have a few examples of, of my favorite examples of how really AI technology is reshaped our day-to-day -day lives, changing the way we really see the world. AI specifically has reshaped traditional ways we've approached our day-to-day -day lives. And when I think about it, I, I often find myself surprised because we are now choosing to have listening devices essentially in our house, in our homes or potentially a road filled with self-driving cars, something that some of us would have never ever imagined, but with personalization and the ability to make our lives easier or even remove mundane tasks, we see, you know, we easily are able to adopt some of these um, changes that we originally considered to be drastic. In addition, um, you know, the biggest use case of AI is personalizing content. Here is an example of Google Smart Reply. So for many people who are Google Gmail users, you may have seen this recent edition of the Smart Reply. Here you can see Google has provided sample replies for users to leverage when responding to an email. 
these emails or these replies are then tailored to how you like to respond and uses the context from your conversation to determine what you would most likely to say. So I actually use this a lot and I, you know, I'm not sure if they are using um, regular responses that, uh, you know, would normally be used, but I often find it is the way that I actually would like to respond, um, which makes, you know, using the feature very useful for me. And that's why one of the reasons why I love it. Being able to respond in two clicks allows me to like continue to be responsive. And I'm, I'm interested to find out, you know, what about all of you? How has AI made day-to-day -day lives easier? Um, if you can include some examples in the chat room, I would love to share it with the rest of the audience and collect those examples as I share a few more um, with you all. Here is another example of the ability to provide detailed information with chatbots. So if you, po you, know, you pose a question, you ask the business a question like Ray-Ban has done here um, and about what type of classes, uh, you know, and you can get an answer back um, basically guiding a personalization of what your purchase should be. You know, Apple and Google know everything about you, right? No. <laughs> no. And here is another example to add to another of the GAFA um, companies to the list. Here's a Facebook example uh, at where you can view an ad that has been adapted, has adapted its messaging and visual based on your demographics. I'm going to go ahead and quickly check the chat room to see if anyone has um, shared, shared an example. But in the meantime, if you have any examples of, of AI that any of you have that you um, can also enter in the chat that have maybe made you uncomfortable. While we're waiting, there's another really cool use case uh, that I saw. So when I went, uh, visited a foreign country and um, the country, essentially everything was in... Um, in uh, in that native language and uh, and I couldn't uh, I couldn't understand what it was like right from the from the restaurant the menu to the, the road signs and the bus stops and uh, then I just pulled out my phone and, and Google Translate has this live translate feature mm -hmm. and uh, it was absolutely amazing in in in, in how accurate uh, it was able to predict and uh, and one of the cool things about this. Uh, uh, this this example that uh, that I that I just spoke about is that some of that tech to power that by Google is is now uh, also powering to some extent uh, some of our capabilities in test complete and uh, you know I'm really excited to talk about that um, uh, in, uh, in 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 the upcoming slides but uh, but that's a, a really cool case that I saw it was a, a direct impact to to my day to day sort of uh, lifestyle. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, uh, that's extremely impressive. And I think that, you know, it's hard to sometimes when we are um, using or seeing AI or seeing some of these changes in our day-to-day -day lives to distinguish between what the difference is between AI and a really clever algorithm. And that is exactly the question that someone um, asked in one of the chat rooms. Lena, would you like to take this question and, 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 that Paul has posed to the group? Yes, thanks Paul for the question. It's an excellent question, by the way. Um, the way to really explain what the difference between the two is that uh, a really clever algorithm can actually use only the information that you give it at the moment to make a decision based on that. That is just pretty much an if statement in the code. But if AI, that means it's not only gonna use the, the current state that you've actually asked the question, but it's gonna use other information that is not included in what you're looking at right now to come up with the prediction. So if you have all the information right there, that is not AI. That is actually just a really clever algorithm. Uh, but if it's actually uh, jumping in and getting more information from the past and from other location, trying to actually make sense of it to give you a prediction, that is what is AI altogether. So a lot of people get confused between uh, a very smart if statement <laughs> in the code and AI. And that is mainly um, the idea behind it. Does that make sense? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lena. And, you know, I don't want to just talk about examples that we have seen AI and, and these, um, even some algorithms in, in today's, in today's kind of, in our day-to-day -day lives, but really how have we seen it change development? And, you know, I wanted to introduce this one example from 
Autodesk. This is Autodesk Dreamcatcher AI, and this is a great example of how AI has, has the potential to revolutionize software development and making it the most tech important technology to understand today. Now here with the Autodesk Dreamcatcher AI, it really enhances the imagination for all designers. Here, a designer can provide Dreamcatcher with a list of requirements about a desired product. So for example, in this scenario, if you wanted a bike uh, to be able to support 300 pounds with a seat of 18 inches off the ground and made of maybe materials less than $75 and, accept, and so on, you can supply all of that information about, about the desired product that we just talked about, so those list of requirements, and then you can supplement it with other um, other characteristics from other chairs that, and it can take all of that information, marry it with the data about the other chairs and churn out thousands of designs that match the given, given, given criteria. You can then even add more input by saying, hey, I don't like this design, I like this design, give it back to the system, um, feed it back to the system and it can give you and produce another round of suggestions based off of that feedback. Now imagine being able to do that for your application that you're developing. Imagine being able to do that when you design test cases. Now AI is really transforming established business models and how we approach software development. Um, it's, you know, it's finding ourselves in itself in various tools and as Prashant mentioned, in, even within Test Complete and some of our tools at SmartBear. Uh, Lino, where do you see AI impacting the software development lifecycle the most? Heavily, it already started, but I'm sure in the next five years, um, everybody involved with software development from R&D to QA will have to actually uh, start thinking heavily about artificial intelligence because this is what the industries um, from manufacturing to transportation to uh, hotels, to everything is going that route. Uh, because nobody have the time to actually go through millions of uh, points of information at a time. Um, so the AI will be a huge part of that. So the software development cycle will have to uh, adapt to that. And having tools like the tools that uh, SmartBear have, for instance, from functional testing and API testing, will have to accommodate uh, the prediction of all these AI servers that will be uh, evaluating specific incidents. So. Um, I believe that the software development, especially for R&D and QA, will count heavily on that going forward. Mm -hmm. And we know that software development really includes the, you know, especially when it comes to software testing, um, it impacts the AI side as well as the, I'm sorry, it impacts the AAPI side as well as the UI layer. And so, you know, I want to engage, get a little bit more information and, and see how to cater the conversation that we have today about AI um, and understand a little bit more about how do you test the API and UI layer in your organization. So I'm going to put another poll up um, for all of you. If you can go ahead. Oh, looks like I received an error. All right, here is another poll to better understand how you test the API and UI layer in your organization. Is it the same, te um, same team that tests both of them? Is it different teams? Is it that you only test one um, or the other? And you know what I really like seeing about these results? It looks like the majority of people who are responding are testing both of those layers. So that's really always great to see in this industry because um, it really does provide this back-end protection as well as the front-end uh, uh, people who are ensuring quality on both, both sides, um, front-end and back-end. All right, I'll wait a few more minutes for a few more people to um, enter in their results. All right, great. And I'll share these results for you with you so you can see. Oh, looks like. So as you can see, it looks like, you know, um, it's an e almost an even split between the same, te same team testing 
the API and the UI layer versus the different teams testing it. But it's always great to see um, that both, both are being tested. You know, that is definitely one of the um, biggest changes that's happening. I, I feel like, you know, a few years back, people were only testing one layer. Um, and now we are seeing more and more people test both layers, whether it is the same team or different teams. Other market trends and business goals, I, I, something I wanted to introduce here, because I do think these various trends and business goals that are coming up are demanding us to continue to drive uh, even larger demand for faster release cycles. So here you'll see, you know, market trends are really around AI, as we mentioned, mark, machine learning, robotic process automation, um, open source. These are all things that are continuing to shape business priorities and reach new levels of speed, quality, and cost, further driving this need and desire for faster release cycles. Across the board, automation is currently, I feel, underexploited in QA and testing. Uh, the average level of automation for test activities is around 16% based off of the World Quality Report. But test automation and agile testing is the first step towards increasing your SDLC speed. With test automation in place, um, only teams that can take advantage, only can teams really take advantage of continuous testing and really eventually automated, uh, autonomous testing. Prashant, from your perspective, you know, do, you know, we see a lot of trends here um, with regards to AI uh, and, and robotic process automation. We have a question here about the difference between the two. Um, would you like to go into a little bit about what you think the diff share with the audience about what the difference between AI and robotic process automation is? Sure. So, uh, so there's two things there. So there's AI and there's uh, robotic process automation or RPA. And there's also test automation, which, which essentially is, uh, you know, the tool that you use to automate your tests. So essentially three things there. Uh, the key differences are, uh, you know, RPA essentially is, uh, is a process, right? It's a process of, of automating some of your mundane day-to-day -day tasks. Now, it doesn't have to be uh, your tests that you're writing, but it could be any, any tasks like filling in a form or, uh, you know, data, entering data, getting data from uh, an Excel or, and, and copying it into a, a CRM. So all those manual processes that were uh, essentially done by, by people can now be automated, and uh, and similarly, uh, your your manual testing that is that is currently done can be automated by test automation tools. Now AI comes in as uh, as a mechanism to make these processes more intelligent. So essentially, what you're doing is you're with the help of uh, a lot of data, which it can be either your data or accumulative data that's that that the tool allows you to to leverage. And, uh, and with the help of all this data and, and self-learning, you make each one of these processes that you're automating more intelligent. And uh, so it's important to, to distinguish there because they are not synonymous. AI and uh, RPA or AI and test automation, they're, they're not the same way. AI is, is a method to make your automation more intelligent. And, uh, and we'll talk more about it as we go on. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. And there are ways, you know, AI seems like a bigger market trend, but there are ways to reap benefits from it. And that kind of gives us a little trans transition. It's a good segue into going into how AI can really help mitigate some of the common UI issues folks have um, and how to really test this big idea and this big concept that it seems, but in small ways that necessarily won't break the bank, won't break your application, won't break your system. Uh, AI, as I mentioned, can be benefited, especially in mitigating some of the common UI testing issues um, for those who, whether you guys are on different teams or whether you guys are on the same team that are also developing uh, or testing against your UI layer. Some of these benefits, you know, include, for example, on the test side, uh, around object recognition, test framework design, and in a, inadequate prioritization. Object recognition, I feel, is probably one of the number one common UI issues 
um, and especially an area where autonomous test solutions can tackle and help and where folks can reap benefits from. And this really happens when there, especially when, you know, there are challenges in recognizing various elements in, in, and in someone's DOM and all the application properties that your product may have. On the test maintenance and execution side, when it comes to test refactoring, for example, each application property can change quickly as software developers enhance the application, whether it's adding new, through adding new project uh, objects or new functionality or updating object definitions and descriptions while they're fixing bugs. This complicates test refactoring and factoring increasing the time and effort when maintaining your application. So that's really another big area where AI can help is recognize when changes need to be um, made and, you know, uh, making a recommendation or making changes to automatically fix those updates. So I had a question uh, for all of you with regards to outside of these areas or even in these areas, at, what is the number one UI testing issue that your teams are facing? All right, uh, you know, I'd love for everyone to, uh, to um, think about how, you know, how test design and test maintenance and execution can benefit from modular AI investments. Um, and, and a lot of that is what we see and how AI can impact those areas. So there's definitely many areas in test design. We see it, you know, we talked about object recognition being one of the, one of the most common, uh, if not the number one issue in, in UI testing that we see. Um, and object recognition is also an area where AI can, and an AI investment can help. Other areas include framework generation and risk profiling. And on the other side uh, for maintenance, it includes um, many other areas such as predictive self-healing, intelligent bug hunting, uh, cloud-based virtualization, and process automation. All of these areas we're gonna be discussing in the, in the upcoming slide. But, um, you know, we, I would love to kind of learn more from all of you and how you are using AI to improve perhaps the UI layer in your organization. So I'm going to go ahead and put another poll up. And see if you are using AI today to improve your software testing. So it's really interesting um, just to share a little bit of the results and some insights. A lot of people, you know, they do not use it today, but they do want to start. So it looks like this is, you know, it's uh, good to kind of move forward and talk about how, what are the areas where um, our tools are really playing in this area and how we are improving software testing with AI. When people are, are applying the AI features, they're using, it looks like they're using it for object recognition. Oh, here are the results again, if you guys wanted to take a look. So I'm gonna go ahead and just stop the results and, and move forward with you know, what it takes, what it is in these areas, what does intelligent test design look like? Um, you know, there are many companies out there uh, that are, are starting to play in this area. Prashanth, what do you think about the companies that are in this area um, and have maybe 100% AI tool, AI features out there? Mm -hmm. And they're, you know, not working on under object-oriented programming, but they're only powering their test creation and design through AI. Sure, sure. So 100% AI is... Um is uh is 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 sometimes it's uh it's not possible but a lot of companies uh, a lot of uh, a lot of companies are, are are striving to to achieve that so some of them uh, that come to mind are, are apple tools with their visual testing tool i think it's really really cool uh you know other tools such as uh, test ai and uh, and and mabel are, are also improving 
the test design aspect uh, specifically for web applications through through AI. So there's a lot of a uh, lot of different applications of how UI can uh, how AI can can actually impact your UI testing. And and one of the things that we did also is is make the object recognition aspect in in test complete easy. So sometimes there's 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 objects that you're not able to recognize using uh, typical DOM attributes or uh, properties. Uh, when if it's desktop applications and it's you know the native property, sometimes you just don't have access to it. And 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 a lot of work needs to go into the tool to to give you that access. So sometimes it's uh, it's important to use some other methodology to to access those elements so that you can manipulate it and and work through your application. So. That's a that's a big thing that we introduced in uh, in the latest release of uh, of Test Complete. And you know these concepts that we see here, object recognition and and how AI improves framework generation, risk profiling, Lino. These concepts seem very abstract. Um, in your experience, I know that you've talked to a number of people. Uh, you know, maybe working or implying AI to their organizations. How are organizations really implementing it? Um, and, and given that they are completely two, seem like almost two different skill sets, uh, being a tester and having experience in AI. That's an excellent question as well. Well, the beauty about AI is that it requires a huge amount of data, a huge amount of data. So without AI, you can only do things based on the information that you currently have in your company or something that you have been working with. But with the AI, you're using not only your data, but a lot of other people's data that you don't know anything about that actually feeds the model and retrain the model all the time to get more accurate. Think about, for instance, the object recognition. Let's say, for instance, I want to read something from a PDF, for instance. Uh, if I use the current regular OCRs that are available in, in the market, some of them are very good. But sometimes somebody will use a different font, for instance, and it will not work at all just because the font is not recognized by the current OCR on your machine. But if you use, for instance, the Google Vision AI for artificial intelligence, you're not only using the OCR on your machine, you're using thousands of companies that are dumping all that information inside of a huge amount of big data. And then um, you are pretty much guaranteed that sooner or later, if it's not done already, that that font, for instance, will be recognized. So it's always in training. It's always getting better without you doing anything at all. So I can actually go do an OCR, for instance, on a PDF and a test complete nowadays will be able to make a call into the Google Vision API, find out exactly what you're looking for, even if the fonts have changed and it's not supported maybe on your machine, but Google will figure it out uh, using AI. And then we'll come back and we'll recognize that data right away. That is the power of doing something like that is in, instead of only working on what's available on your machine only and your experience, whatever is installed on your machine. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And so you talked about all this data that's required to make AI successful. You know, AI is basically based off of some structure of input and output. With regards to this type of data that is essentially, you know, at its very core, what the intelligent systems are running off of, for to improve testing, what are the areas that testers or software development teams are really getting data from? Like how are they using data that they have to drive and improve software testing? So some of the examples that we have here with regards to example inputs that would drive um, output such as a recommendation system or reinforcement learning or even device selection when it comes to choosing which device to test on are um, can come from really past test results or um, new test cases or properties or controls so when you're up so if, you know, if you're letting a system or intelligent system scan your your application you know, those properties or controls can all be act as inputs into the system itself. And the more tests that are created or updated, the more the test framework and your test framework can learn from the application under test. Now, I want to do a little segue into intelligent test execution and maintenance look, uh, and what intelligent test execution and maintenance looks like.
Now, maintaining applications can be a really painstaking, grueling task due to complex structures, architectures, and workflows that it supports, and really being intertwined with critical business processes. Traditional automated testing tools will require manual effort um, by technical engineers to successfully scale test automation and leveraging AI for highly dynamic and complex applications. Um, Prashant, what, kind, what can Test Complete do here, or do they have plans with AI to make test execution and maintenance easier? Yeah, ab absolutely. I think someone brought up the uh, uh, the topic of uh, of a really clever algorithm and and AI. And I think what we have now, as far as uh, you know, scanning your application and and looking for changes in properties. So right now, in 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 the latest relief, we've introduced uh, uh, a lot of capabilities that are uh, that are very neatly and uh, and and cleverly little algorithms to figure out what's changed. In an upcoming release, we're just going to power that uh, with uh, with AI, and and so that's when we have really smart. Uh, intelligent system that scans your application under test and tells you beforehand if anything has changed because then you don't have to run your entire test suite and then figure out uh, with the object not found errors and, and, and things like that. So, so that's, uh, that's one thing that's, uh, that's coming up soon uh, for test complete. Really excited about that. Uh, not the most straightforward to develop, but, uh, but yes, we are, we are getting there. Oh, great. You know, and I do, you know, we've mentioned a lot about the, you know, how AI or how intelligent, uh, how, you know, sometimes test complete or some of the features we have are really um, taking advantage of this technology. So I do want to showcase that a little bit, but before we go ahead and do so, you know, I think where AI can really help refocus testing efforts is this new paradigm. It helps, you know, people have mentioned over the question in the chat, about the speed of agile um, and leveraging AI really allows for that new paradigm to exist that is really focused on ag agility, scale, coverage, and impact. Now, we are have played a big part uh, in a smart bear across the across our product suite, suite in terms of distinguishing. Um, how to improve each of these areas, whether it's leveraging AI, whether it's improving our product um, in various ways to address some of the common issues on the API side or on the UI side. So before diving into the changes that have, we have made into the products and how we are continuing to innovate, you know, we have a number of products that cover the UI layer, the API layer, and across the SDLC and the software development lifecycle that we've introduced. And we really, not just the AI features um, that we have referenced, we really have taken a, a great ownership and honed in into our um, innovation to produce more features and address more of our customer needs. And you'll really see that in the most recent fall updates that we've made to a series of our products. On the Ready API side, we provide, now we provide native doctor, doc, uh, Docker support. This is, you know, really has enabled our teams to, enabled agile teams to seamlessly embed API testing into their DevOps pipeline. You know, we've referenced test complete a lot and we'll dive into that a little bit more, but you know, with this new release and with this AI features, we introduce the, you know, the first hybrid object recognition engine with AI, which marries the stable and accurate features that we have to accurately detect and test various application properties with um, powered with visual recognition and in AI. For QA complete, we now have exploratory testing. For HIP test, uh, which is our continuous testing platform that enables both businesses and technical teams to seamlessly collaborate on feature definitions and then directly from GitHub, GitLab, and Bitbucket. With um, Swagger Hub, we have customizable documentation. With Alert Site, we have root cause analysis. And with cross-browser testing, our um, all-in-one device 
testing platform, we are now have a free open source program featuring manual and automated visual testing capabilities. So a lot has been going on. Smart, has, Smart Bear has definitely kept busy um, this fall of 2018. But I do want to go ahead and chime in to test complete a little bit more and some of the features that we mentioned around our AI. So in, in to kind of specify where this is helping, um, AI, you know, we've talked about a lot about how it can improve test design, how it can improve test maintenance and execution. But the number one issue in UI testing tools seems to be object recognition. And, you know, as some of the responses that came in through the poll, that is one of the areas where you are already seeing AI, um, well, folks in teams are implementing AI to improve. We talked about this hybrid definition kind of being this merry, um, this married approach between property-based design and visual recognition. And this is actually what allows our tool to achieve maximum level of test coverage. So you'll see here that if you're just focusing on object-oriented programming, you know, you have the stability and level of accuracy because you are programming each of those properties uh, specifically and testing against those specific properties. But when you can't, you know, uh, when you can't recognize all of those capabilities or all those properties because of how dynamic they are, that's when our AI features come in. We are able to have a, a, an engine that recognizes the property-based values that you program, but then in addition, when it doesn't recognize it, it automatically and seamlessly translates and switches to an approach that uses AI when objects are not detected. So now this eliminates a lot of the um, user actions that people see and makes UI testing even easier. Now, Lino, you all you had you know a great uh, a great analogy and a great description and definition of how this feature of AI paired visual recognition and this ability to extract data from images that we now provide um, in our latest feature really is. Uh, using AI from in your in your terms in your definition how is this feature really AI and how can it help testers out there the recognition of things inside of a PDF for instance or a map inside of a website which is not really an object but it's just a map being drawn on the screen based on map coordinates for instance or if you're using something like Oracle forms or one of the most uh, uh, wanted feature forever, which is uh, running an application um, inside of a Citrix, for instance, which is there are no objects there at all. And a lot of people complain, like whenever you run something in Citrix, um, that's a completely different machine. Uh, you cannot uh, test it at all from the, from the machine that is hosting Citrix, for instance. All these things now will be able to test it based on recognizing the screen and then sending it to the AI engine and being able to um, uh, just get every single content of that image, whatever is text. Uh, in the old days, we were trying to do that stuff, but with the OCR being limited uh, based on fonts, based on the resolution, based on this and that, it used to fail. So it was not something that we could, could count on. And now we're using the AI and sharing that intelligence with actually uh, thousands of other companies that are actually dumping in the same bucket of data it gets a lot better and a lot faster um, nowadays. And Test Complete in 12.6 is actually doing that for the OCR based on the Google Vision uh, AI. And it works w way better than the old OCRs that we used to use. Mm -hmm. And I really feel that we can see the power of this when we see it in, um, in real life and, and take place with some practical use cases. Lino, do you mind if I switch the presentation to you so you can um, demo? Uh, an example for the audience? Sure, it would be my pleasure. Okay, great. All righty. I'm going to share the screen. Hopefully you can tell me if you see the my screen. We see it. All right, perfect. So that is test complete 12.6 in here. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to open up at a PDF, for instance. This is a PDF. Um, that actually shows a certificate of completion from the partner program, for instance. So the, the problem that we have in here um, is that whether you're a customer or a partner, uh, there are thousands of people that actually pass a certification for one of the products. And now somebody inside of SmartBear 
will have to verify that everybody got their certificates. So you don't want to do that one by one. So whenever somebody sends you a name and saying, I did not receive that certificate, you can run a test in test complete. We'll go through all the, the PDFs inside of a specific directly, a directory or a Dropbox or a Drive or something like that. And being able to see if that name is available anywhere on, uh, on this certificate. Can you do that with the old OCR? Yes, absolutely you can. The unfortunate thing is if the word Lino Tadros in here changes in font, maybe they want to write it in script and make it look nice or whatever, it will probably not find it. And that's the problem a lot of people were used to, uh, to have. But now in Test Complete, for instance, they've added a couple of more things here in the uh, keyword operations. We have something called OCR action. And also if I go to checkpoints, there is something called OCR checkpoint. These are the ones that are using artificial intelligence. So if I drag the OCR checkpoint, for instance, in near one of my tests, and I can use the object spy to go to my PDF and wait till the red rectangle goes around the entire PDF, and then I release the mouse. Now test complete is gonna to try to recognize this entire uh, PDF and read all the text on it using the uh, Google uh, Vision AI API. So there it is, it was able to find the object itself in there, and then it took a screenshot just for documentation reasons only, so you can have it in your project. It will say next, and now it's reading using the Vision API from Google, all the information, it recognized everything on the screen. My interest is my name, so I'm gonna just highlight Lino Talos, and notice when you highlight it, that is the pattern that we'll be actually looking for. So now I can load thousands of different PDFs with a couple of lines actually inside of my operations in here for test complete. And I look at each and every single one of them is the word Lino Tadros is showing up inside of that certificate. And I'm gonna, and actually even if I change the font and even if it's a font that usually is not used, it will still find it based on a lot of other people hopefully using the same font so it has been educated. That's the idea behind model training and retraining of the model. So we'll say finish and there is my OCR checkpoint in here. Now when I run my test, it will actually go back to the PDF. It will try to find the same word, Lino Tadros, on the screen. And it will, if it finds it, it will be successful. It will come back and will say, we're all good. There you go, the checkpoint for Lino Tadros passed because it found it in there. So it's a small example just to show you what exactly is gonna happen. But think about a PDF that has a lot of, for instance, uh, entry points, like uh, maybe a form for the IRS having the first name, last name, social security numbers and all that stuff. You can actually, um, do that with the OCR checkpoints to make sure that all of them are correct and entered correctly as a testing. Maybe you're reading from an Excel spreadsheet that has all the correct information for the, uh, for the IRS form. And then you're loading from the Excel and checking in there that everything is correct in the form itself. And you don't have to worry about um, the, uh, the, the font that is being used, the size or the resolution or anything like that that we used to have to worry about in the old OCR system that we used to work. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you uh, so much, uh, uh, Lino. Another thing to point out here is, uh, uh, so this example that, that Lino showed was, uh, was the PDF, but the cool thing about this feature is uh, that this feature is application agnostic. So whether you have a web application, a desktop application, uh, a mobile application, a packaged application, or a PDF-based application, uh, like Lino was showing, uh, this uh, OCR feature is gonna work um, uh, really seamlessly, really smooth, and 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 provide uh, all the information very, very accurately. We've seen a very high accuracy rate here, and uh, and then and apart from checkpoints, you can also uh, perform actions on that. So in case you want to click on a button with a specific text, uh, you can do that also with uh, with the OCR action. And I I believe you know you have uh, uh, an, another example too. Oh uh, yes, um, I can show that. Can everybody see my screen still? Yep. All right, great. So for instance, one of the things that were hard to test um, for a long time is that when you have, for instance, let's like say on the Microsoft Azure, I'm using something called Databricks, which is notebooks that are loaded directly into the browser. So you can execute commands in Python and Scala and R, which are the languages that are used uh, for artificial intelligence themselves. So I'm gonna launch in here my, uh, my workspace. And this is what we called an Azure notebook. So you can actually write some, um, some, some text in here, but once in a while you'll want to execute a command like when number three in here, I'd like to run something in Python to, start, to uh, set up a classroom. Later on, I can actually um, load a huge file, uh, terabytes and terabytes of files from a parquet file, for instance, which is very heavily used in artificial intelligence and machine learning. So if I wanted to test something like this 
That was not easy. And the reason for that is if I push F12 in Google Chrome, for instance, you will notice if I go try to find out what the cell's name is, I can get to it by name. So if I click on it right there, notice that none of them have names. So the divs only have CSS classes, which would be very difficult for me to get to it from Test Complete or any other tool. Um, it will not be easy. I'm hoping that these divs will have an ID. Um, somehow I can get back to it again. But now with the, with the new feature in 12.6, I can actually manage uh, the way I can execute notebooks using uh, Scala or, or Python really, really easy with that. So if I go, for instance, uh, to test complete again, uh, let's go ahead and delete that first OCR. And instead of using a checkpoint, I'm going to go to test actions. And notice at the bottom here, there's an OCR action. That's the one I'm using AI in test complete in 12.6. I'm going to drag the object spy into uh, my web browser. And I'm going to go until I see a red rectangle around the entire cell itself. So we're going to, there you go. There's the entire cell for command number three. So I'm going to release the mouse at this point. And now test complete is going to actually um, try to recognize that object and read everything inside of it using the Google Vision AI servers. And notice it's taking a little bit longer to do it, but it will come back. The reason for that is there are thousands of HTML elements on this page. And because it's actually having to use the document object model, it has to make a tree of the whole thing. That's why it's okay to wait for it for a few seconds. And like it was able to recognize the object is inside of a panel, inside of a panel, inside of a panel. So it's a huge hierarchy for that page. And I'm gonna say next right there. And now it's gonna to try to read that specific cell, the panel, and it will read everything inside of it. And then this is the part I'm interested in is the run command that is pointing out to the classroom setup. So if I choose that, what happens if, for instance, we have this line in multiple places inside of the screen? Which one should we check for? The preferences here will say, I don't have any preference. We can say the nearest to the center of the screen, leftmost, rightmost, topmost, because sometimes that what you're looking for is available multiple times in the same image that you are looking for. So you can actually tell it uh, which one or what is it closest to, top, bottom, right, left, whatever it is. In my case in here, it's easy because it's only once inside of that uh, OCR. So I'm going to say next. And now what do you want to do once you find that? You want to click on it, middle click, right click, and all these other functions or hover over it with the mouse and so on. In my case, I'm going to click on it because I want to actually give it focus inside of my notebook. And there it is. This is the entire command done for me in a few seconds. And the only thing I want to do right now is to execute. Uh, this line of code. And the way to execute it in notebooks in the Microsoft Azure is to do a control enter on this line. So I can actually go back to my test complete and I can do a call object method, for instance, here at the end. And here we'll say sys, which is the system for test complete. We'll say next. And there is a lot of functions you can get to. The one I'm interested in is to key in something from the keyboard. There is keys and the value would be the control key, which you do it with the uh, um, with the shift six, and then we'll say um, enter with a capital E. If you do that, that would do a control enter automatically in there. So we'll say finish there. And now I have my full test. Look, for instance, when I run this test now, look what will happen. It will actually go back to the website again. It will go click inside of the command three and it will actually execute it. And it's done, it's 100% successful. As you can see, it started already the running of the command in there. So you don't have to remember what is the ID for the command or anything like that. Of course, if you want to spend some more time to create a framework out of this, you definitely can by creating a framework to read the commands. So there's a command two and command three. So you can write a small little framework in test complete. So you can tell it, go run command number three. And based on your code, it will go ahead and understand where to find that command and then whatever is underneath it to be able to execute it and so on. Again, you can use the OCR. It works very well for notebooks. Um, and you can use this with uh, Python, uh, with Scala, with R, and it works very well for all of them. That makes sense? Well, this is great, Lino. Thank you. Thank you so much. Absolutely. You know, this is great. I think this is a great showcase for how the OCR as well as the um, hybrid object recognition can be used and expanding our various use cases. In the mean, in the interim, we have received a number of questions on, you know, how can this, um, how can you know this feature be used um, within Test Complete and areas that it can test on. Um, we received one question where it could be where someone asked, 
if this can be tested on a chatbot. Is this something that can be used in that scenario? Can you hear me still? Yep. Oh, yes. Also, in the meantime, could you stop sharing and I'll take over? That's what I'm trying to find out. How do you stop sharing? <laughs> I think I got it. No problem at all. You probably can kick me out from your side and take it back. <laughs> oh, there you go. Thank you. So, so um, just to repeat my question, we received a number of questions on where this can be in use. So I wanted to go and dive into a couple of use cases um, in addition to the ones that uh, Lino has just shared. One is with regards to just business intelligence tools and data visualization. So you can actually interact and verify content on charts, maps, and images. In addition to just charts and data visualization um, tools in general, you can also navigate non-GUI applications. Um, another one is just navigating through and automating testing of mainframe applications. Uh, Lino had mentioned a PDF and he had showed you how to do that. Um, in addition, not just uh, extracting and validating PDF data on PDF forms, but uh, sorry, just not just PDFs, but also PDF and editable forms as well. Somebody on, um, in the chat room also asked about software team, uh, sorry, uh, Citrix applications. So this can definitely be used on Citrix applications um, as well as other packaged apps like SAP, Azure, as was showcased here, as well as Oracle Forms as well. Now in the interim, does, did anyone else have any more questions in the last couple of minutes? It looks like we do have some questions coming in um, and that we weren't necessarily able to answer. So I will go ahead and call some out to see if some can be answered. Yeah, I, I think I, I see one actually. I think there's, a, there's one question at the end there. Uh, you know, will, the, will this, this OCR action uh, see a page even if it cannot inspect the object. Yes, as long as uh, uh, the UI is visible to uh, test complete, um, no matter if uh, test complete is able to break in at the object level, as long as the the image is, is available, uh, you can recognize any kind of text on that on that object. So it doesn't. So you don't necessarily need to have uh, uh, an object uh, to to use the OCR feature. Great, thank you so much. All right, well, we can take one more question. Uh, it looks like we won't be able to, uh, you know, showcase another demo in the, another, in the next uh, two minutes, but, you know, please go ahead and contact us at any point. We'll be in touch with you if you are interested to see a demo in a specific application. Um, Thank you so much, so much for those that have attended and um, and taking the time out of your day, your busy schedules to join us today in today's webinar. Thank you, Prashanth and Lino, my co-presenters. We will go ahead and take some time um, to answer questions after the webinar. And just a reminder: so you, if you are and would like to access this recording again, we do. We will be providing and uploading it on demand at smartbear.com forward slash resources. Thank you so much for joining us and hope to see you next time. Thank you.